name is Kari and today I want to do a full face a makeup look that is inspired by the stone amethyst. I just want to be clear that I'm not a spiritual person so I don't believe in all sort of spiritual benefits and effects associated with stones in general. I am getting a degree in mining engineer and as many many other minerals that we are extract right now for the common applications of them amethyst is just minerals and it's a quartz is a violet variations of quartz and i don't think there's any special of it it's silicon dioxide but I love it because it's purple and it has this special crystal lattice structures that give us this beautiful appearance. I'm wearing my amethyst bracelet right now. So I adore it for the beauty of it. But overall it's just chemistry and physics that gives it this appearance. So yeah, I just don't like the whole conversations about the real benefit of a stone because that's not real they can say that okay it can omit some sort of energy of course it's called black body radiations any object that has a temperature that is higher than the absolute zero can omit electromagnetic radiation at certain wavelengths and yeah like any other thing else so <laughs> Yeah, I just don't, um, I don't consider myself a, a huge fan of those conversations and also the conversation around birthstone. So amethyst, I believe, is the birthstone of the month February. I, yeah, I don't know personally anybody who was born in February, so no connections to me, but I still love it. And when they tell me my birthstone is citrine, I feel like I'm not a stone that's yellow. So take it as you will. I was just inspired and yeah, really fascinated by the beauty of the stone amethyst. So I just want to do a purple ethereal violet, but some sort of like a bit muted you see like it's not very bright purple so we just want to get into the full purple vibe today <laughs> that's the main point of this video and i hope you like it i'm gonna skip through like complexion and stuff and really focus on the the color product in today's videos that i believe could give me the whole amethyst vibe i have chosen some really to me beautiful color that could fit the vibe so yeah we won't spend a lot of time on complexion but I will tell you what I use uh, this is the Sephora best skin ever high coverage concealer I got the shade 20 yeah 20 I think it's been a beautiful day today like with a lot of sunlight and I think for this time of year this is the last bit of sunlight in summer in Perth this year so I'm gonna enjoy it because very soon we're gonna get into fall and yeah it's gonna be a bit chilly and rainy mm. To be honest, the cold is never my thing. So uh, I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying this kind of a bit hottish, a bit humid weather. I don't mind it. I'm from Vietnam. It's a tropical country, so this is nice. So I actually want to use two bronzers today to to get that kind of like glowy and shimmery but like in a subtle but sheeny way not too glittery so i pull out my butter bronzer and this is the tarte breezy bronzer 
this packaging is very clunky at the moment but yeah I just want to use it why it's still on is plastic I had a comment the other day there's a girl who reminded me that she loved applying bronzer in a way that she applied a cream bronzer and then layer a powder bronzer on top and I'd be like I agree I totally agree with you that's an absolute beautiful way to work with cream product because I feel like it's always more pigmented more even a bit smoother if you do it that way but honestly I cannot put that effort to do double layers every day so just one another but I think that's a beautiful tip and yeah it's a beautiful comment I don't get comments very often because you can tell this is like a his bosom side channel if you will so I do appreciate comments to be honest like I do appreciate comments and yeah and likes and people who are watching me it's interesting because I never actually tell anyone I know that I have a YouTube channel about makeup yeah <laughs> it's embarrassing <laughs> to be honest it's it's quite embarrassing let me put it that way because of I don't know because of the way that I am making videos it's a bit embarrassing it's also a bit amateur so I don't really want to let anybody know until I know how to make it work on my channel but I don't know <laughs> I don't know I I'm, I'm yeah I'm, I'm a bit insecure about that and yeah I don't know if that's the way I should feel yesterday actually while I was in the classroom we were having a mining match money lecture I yeah I opened up my YouTube so you know like you have some moments of distraction during the lecture and you just pull up whatever is available on your computer and I just pull up my yeah my YouTube studio and one of my friends actually noticed that I I pull up that tab and he asked me like are you a YouTuber? I was shocked I was like I was embarrassed I was ashamed I was a bit shocked I don't know whether I should lie to him but yeah I'll just say oh yeah and he said so cool you're so cool and he asked me what am I making videos about? I said makeup and to be honest for an engineer he's a, he's a boy but for an engineer to hear that there's also a female engineer who's making YouTube about makeup I think to him that's the most harmless thing so he's like that's okay <laughs> he was like oh um yeah he didn't know how to react but then he said well then I'm not your demographic and that's cool that's fair that's that's really fair but it's interesting to face a situation that emulates the scenario maybe one day I have to confront like be confronted not that serious but like to face up with the questions okay are you doing YouTube but I enjoy making YouTube videos about makeup so maybe I should feel ashamed or try to hide away from it so now this is the powder bronzer oh it's very crumbly right now oh I really like the natural glow of the butter bronzer it's it's not sparkly it's just nice and glowy and yeah see that so happy 
like I've been drinking a bunch of water and get a very healthy amount of tan. Talking about bronzers, I really want to try the new NYX, what's it called, like butter, also butter bronzer, something butter because they name all their shades related to like butter lash batter, like all of the, you know, playing with words, but I guess it's called, it's something called like smooth butter bronzer, I, I don't remember, just the NYX in a, you know, rectangular packaging really really cute and they have rosy undertone and I've been wanting to try it since they announced that they're gonna launch it and now they actually available at price light in Australia but unfortunately they carry only four shades in store and yeah four out of eight original shades in the US so is such a miss because the shades that I want to try which has more rosy red and pink undertone is not actually available in Australia and now I I guess I want to go to the store and swatch some of the shades that are available here to see is there anyone that like close enough but yeah, I just want to try a rosy tone bronzer. That's the whole thing. So that I can use it as a bronzer situation. So I think it's interesting. I think it's going to be beautiful. And I've heard a good thing about that formulation. So, man, it's been a while. It's been a while since I really want to try a bronzer. Yeah, so I think I'm gonna get it. A blush that I think is the most appropriate in my collection that would fit the vibe that I wanna go for. So this is the MAC Love Joy Mineralized. No, it's the MAC Mineralized. Okay, we see the vibe here. Blush in the shade Love Joy. It's a beautiful, rosy, a bit desaturated, a bit muted, and it has a lot of shimmer in it. It's so beautiful. It's wonderful. It is saturated, but I think it's still warm. I don't I don't think it's like cool tone and then desaturated. I think it's warm tone, but then has more grayish pigment into it. I'm, I'm not sure if I'm making any sense, but you can see it on my cheek right here. So very subtle and nice mauve purple undertone but has this like corally pink effect to it and the glow. Today is all about the glow. Highlighter. Um, I'm not sure this is the right move but I have this elf white side eyeshadow palette in the shade rose water that is shade right here is a like pink shade with yeah violet purple even more cool tone than the blush shade so maybe I could use it it's very sparkly this is such a great eyeshadow formula but I'm not sure how it's gonna shine lay it's a highlighter but I'm gonna use a tiny bit of it and try to like scatter it out so that it's not too blinding but still have this kind of like crystallization sparkling effect so we'll just start with a little bit right here and let's just yeah let me just start a little bit right here but I have to make sure that it's blend it out because you can see it had this very strong pink purple pigment I don't want it to be a streak of color on my cheekbone ok 
Okay. I think it worked. I think it actually worked. Let me do the same thing with the other side. The key is tap off the exit. And the star of the show is always the eye look. I pull out three palettes ish so that I, yeah, just for the inspiration of today's look. I have this, of course. Amethyst Crystal Gemstone Palette. It's from Eta Beauty. They are not a brand anymore. And yeah, I'm really sad that they are not a brand anymore. It hurts me a little bit when they put out that announcement. But I guess people, that, people have their own time. And I have my own time with this palette. And I still love it. This palette is old, but the color story and everything is still wonderful. Such a beautiful amethyst vibe palette and I think it, it fits perfectly with the color story of different variations of that gemstone. It's beautiful. It's cool tone. It's a bit warm tone. It has some really beautiful you know sparkly shade in the middle but not too over the top. This palette is very wonderful. So I'm going to use some of the mattes in this palette. I think I like the mattes in this palette better than the shimmers. Although the shimmers are themselves really gorgeous. But I will mainly focus on the matte in this palette today. Because I have this Dreamed of Me palette from Australis. Look at this corner. This is such, I mean, they are the same vibe. I think they are quite similar colors to each other. But this corner right here with all of the flecky texture, multi-dimensional, duochromic shades. I'm going to use one of these shades today. Uh, the shades, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So sparkly. And of course... <laughs> Cleona stained glass collection. I have four wonderful purple shades right in here. I pick four purple shades because that's me. More than anything, they are the gemstone themselves. So I will use one of these shades. This shade it looks white, but it has this purple, violet, indigo iridescence to it. Yeah, it's quite wonderful. It's it's wonderful. So let's start with some matte shades. I think I always start with either one of these two shades. I don't remember. Yeah, they're called Center and Meditations. I don't think it even matters anymore because this palette is no longer exist. Oh, the mats, the mats. Oh, it's so wonderful. It's so soft and easy to work with after all these years. They blend like in five seconds. I don't say that they blend themselves, but it doesn't take any time at all to blend them. I'm gonna deepen the outer corner up a little bit with the shade. It's a bit deeper, a bit more purple. The transition shade is a bit gray. You can see that there are multiple colors of amethyst, but I think my favorite is to some of the deepest and darkest one, like a deep blue purple i think they look so gorgeous there's like a mystic aspect to how they look compared to those who are like more translucent transparent some are very you know clear to me i don't mind that much because i love that 
mysterious quality of those who look a bit opaque and deep. I say that just to get myself another reason to collect more amethyst jewelry. I have this bracelet here with me, I have like a necklace, but in it's in a mixture with other stones, so it's not a pure amethyst one. I'm thinking about getting another just amethyst necklace because I think it's beautiful and if there's any excuse for me to wear purple every single day, I would take it. I think half of my belongings and possessions are purple. Yeah, I've been looking around seeing like I'm telling the truth, but I feel like a lot of my clothes are purple, my bags, you know, stationery, even this phone case is purple. I love purple. Mm, I mean, I'm torn because, like I said, I want to, I like deep amethyst, so I want to deepen the eye look even a little bit further today. It's not what I usually do. I think this is already a decent level of intensity that I would go for. But I do really want to deepen things up a little bit today. And I am between. I got this deep shade in the Stream Dummy palette. I also have this like almost charcoal blue. Hmm. This one is like purpley brown. I'm going to use a little bit of the shade. One of like the hardcore lessons that I actually learned myself while doing makeup is that when you first touch your brush to whatever area that you want to apply your powder product and you feel like, oh, it's too deep, it's way deeper than expected, don't try to blend right away. That's the sign of your ancestor telling you that don't blend. Just go to the other side. Usually it's like a cheek, so you have two cheeks. Maybe like you have a forehead, a jawline, so you have some surface area to work with. So just don't right away try to blend it because there are still products on your brush. And the more you try to blend it, the more product is gonna be spread out. So just, yeah, just tap whatever product left on your brush to the other side because you know you're gonna go back to it anyway. Just try to, yeah, that's the people, they try to like switch up the powder product on the, on the back of the hand like this. Just don't. So if you think it's too much, don't try to blend it with a full brush, with a brush full of product. That's counterproductive. But it's interesting. It's interesting that in a panic mode, I don't say this is like a too serious, very anxious and dangerous situation that you're facing with a sun hazard, but it's actually human behavior to act like that. Like when you face up with something that's out of your control, you panic, and I panic, and that's okay. But in that split second, we have to gain the control back, and we don't really have a lot of time. Like, this is nothing, but when you actually face up with a lot of, um, how can I put it? But when you actually have to face up with a decision-making process why you only have a few seconds to do it you have to be quick you have to you have to know what is the safe way to do there are gonna be multiple safe ways to to do it to deal with the situations but then you have to pick you have to pick the most effective way for you and as a part of the engineering practice and mindset, I I try to do it a bit 
more frequently, a bit more subconsciously, so that when it comes to like a real situations, because it will, because it's definitely gonna happen to me if I take a role as an engineer. I yeah, I just want to do. A better thing. I'm gonna use one of the clear and shades right here. I guess they are all the same. They are all the same shade, the same tone, the same colorful shirt with just different finishes. And yeah, one color a little bit more than the other. So just yeah, I think I'm. I try one in a recent video when I try my Cleona shades already, so I don't remember. I don't actually remember what I used. Coat of arms. Oh, I have to be very careful. They are very soft. I don't want to damage them. Griselda? Griselda? Grisella? Yeah, so yeah, I'm actually gonna use the shades. I don't want to start with too much, too much product, so I'm actually gonna use the same fluffy brush to pick up the pigments. Okay, I am gonna place it towards the outer corner. It's so great! Ah, I actually look like an amethyst. <laughs> Spreading it everywhere along the area that plays the matte eye shadows. Yeah, because I kind of want that effect. So, not strategically placing it in any certain area. And I think this looked kind of cool. <laughs> It's so gorgeous. It's so stunning. And I'm gonna pick up the shade. Um, uh, I'm not sure what's the name of it. Deep dive or energy, whatever shade it is. I think it's energy. It sounds more appropriate for the shade. Yeah, this is like the mushy kind of like a bit creamy. A bit gel like kind of shadow. I'm gonna put it right in this inner corner. Oh my god, this is everything. Oh, this is everything. This is the full eye look. I'm so happy with the choices of eyeshadow today. The look turned out to be so beautiful. And finally, we have some lip products. I have these two from Espoir and are they just on theme? <laughs> I think my makeup collection is all based on the color purple. I got this. Ooh, I'm not sure about the actual the actual name of the formula, but yeah, I'm gonna link it down below. This is the shade Lavender Quartz, basically amethyst. The name is basically amethyst. I think it's a lip tint. The color is like mauvey but rosy. Yeah, that goes really well with everything. And I actually want to put on some gloss on top. So this is Glacier. The shade name is Glacier. And I also remember to leave the full name of the product down below. It's basically a clear lip gloss with a little bit of purple blue sparkle to it. But I don't think you can see the glitter from that distance, it's just very subtle and if you get like real close, like 
like someone who's like about to kiss me maybe they notice but i don't know i don't know like <laughs> in what way they will notice but look at the component this is enough this is more than enough and we have the final look what you think about it is it amethyst enough and yeah I, i'm really happy with the whole purple vibe oh it's getting a bit dark no it's not gonna rain it just yeah yeah it's just a bit cloudy this time of the day and i hope you enjoy this look i hope you enjoy the products i picked to complete this look and once again i'm cloudy and hopefully we see each other again bye